I think that it's a great enhancement for science, uh, the possibility to use IPS-based models. So there are a lot of advantages, mainly due to the fact that we can use patient-derived IPS, but we can also make uh, gene editing through CRISPR-Cas9 and uh, use it, using isogenic uh, IPS that express only the mutation that we need in order to dissect the impact of that mutation on a particular phenotype instead of having a background influence on that. Uh, it could be um, hard, so I mean, it's strange to think that something like a neurodegenerative disease could be studied using neurodevelopmental models because uh, starting from IPS, even though we can arrive through three months or four months or five months development, they are still developmental models and not degenerative models. But it has been demonstrated that this type of mutations mainly uh, also on tau, for instance, we have also data on that, they already impact on the neuronal size, neuronal formation, neuronal morphology, and also in the synaptic activity. So we can see from the beginning in the organoid model, in the cell lines derived from IPS, things that maybe will have a strong impact in the adulthood and not in the development. And another thing is that uh, uh, moving from 2D to 3D system, this is a very nice example of how much uh, increasing the degree of freedoms uh, is improving our ability to find things. Because thanks to the extracellular matrix in 3D, is it possible to find the beta amyloid aggregates that you cannot see in 2D culture. So I think that organoids can offer a very nice model to study both neurodevelopmental but also um, neurodegenerative diseases.